Alright, hello ladies and gents, welcome to Virtus Pro versus Dat. We have unfortunately missed a pistol round because um, they were short on GoTV relays. But, here we are, on Overpass. Chewie, have you ever played this map in your life? <laughs> Being new to CS? No, not at all. Well, I mean, so the map's this is newer than you are to CS. It's going to be an interesting <laughs> one. This, uh, I, I did try and watch some demos and stuff of Overpass the other day, but they didn't download correctly, meaning that I couldn't watch anything, and I didn't really have enough time on the clock. So this is definitely uh, going to be an, in an interesting cast. I saw everybody on, on Twitter go, Oh, Overpass, we've got Overpass already. And you know, me and you were kind of saying, if, if we get Overpass, it's certainly going to be an interesting one, because in all honesty, this map is... Uh, yeah, we've not got too much of an idea about it, but uh, I think it's just going to be great fun anyway. Mate, I'm feeling confused already whilst watching it, but it is going to be World Edit to get two CZ kills. But Snacks, oh, he got dinked himself. He did leave Blade bleeding internally on only 20 points of health, and it is going to be Flamey to even things up at four versus two. Now, Taz and Neo both have P90s, but Flamey, World Edit, and Blade are on very low HP themselves, so this is still doable for Virtus Pro. Neo's going to go all in with that P90. He's going to try and drop the Bomb Planter in Ubeek, does so successfully, but it's going to be Blade to get the return frag, leaving Taz one versus three. He's not going to be able to do it, so World Edit finishes him off. And that's a big round on the board there for Dat, of course, considering the fact that they did lose the pistol round and the round after that. And they were on an eco there, but it's probably not able to capitalise off that, and they won't be happy. It looks like they are going to force things up, though, as best as possible. Having a look at it, uh, they've all been able to buy armour. Uh, we've got two M4s, an SSG and a FAMAS, and Bialy's just having to settle for a 5-7 there, so it's going to be interesting to see what Virtus Pro can do. Of course, you know, we can pretty much just spend the entire game talking about this team and their accomplishments recently. They've been playing so well. They didn't have the best of Saturdays in the group stages at G3 just a few weekends ago, and then they just went absolutely huge on Championship Sunday and came out and actually won the entire event. And of course, they were your Cadavitzi champions as well. Yeah, they were. It's going to be Blade to get that return headshot onto Snacks as he slowly but surely makes his way closer to that B bomb site. And this is honestly like one massive maze. It really is. I, I just, I just, I'm just really interested I'm trying in to how comprehend the, what's going on. <laughs> it's just, it's just the fact that the bomb sites are so close to each other by the looks of things. I mean, look at them. You can see on the mini map there. It's pretty much just right next to each other. Here we go, Blade and Bondic just outside this B bomb site. Pasha with the scout. Managed to get a get a tag onto World Edit. That nade isn't gonna do too much damage. World Edit did run away, but I'm sure that'll allow Pasha to pretty much pinpoint the positions of the DAT players now. And here we go. It's gonna be Bondic to drop Neo, while somewhere else on the map it's gonna be Taz to get the return frag, and Bondic will get two. Yep, and uh, Virtus Pro are going to be happy with this, although it was a, it was a force by, they did manage to get two frags on the board there, but now uh, that with two rounds on in the row, and that's going to put things all even here heading into round number five, so uh, yeah, um, Virtus Pro will be happy with the two frags that they picked up, uh, but of course because they fought and really mess with their economy now, and having a look at it, you know, they're really struggling uh, for money, no armour whatsoever, no grenades even, it's just going to be full pistols, and uh, we've got P250's name of the game, and also a couple of CZ75's here, so you would expect because of that, that this is going to be 3-2 in favour of that, which will of course put them in the lead for the first time in this game, but we're going to see what's going on, and by the looks of things, it looks like the T's could be making a quick progression over towards the B bomb site, the bomb has been dropped though, after uh, Blade, uh, sorry no, the Blade, uh, sorry the bomb's still up, I do apologise, I don't know what I was watching, and again I'm still getting confused with this map, still a 4 versus 3, mate. not a 3 versus 3 situation though, and Max finally being able to pick up a rifle here, he's going to do some work, he does one, but not quite enough as well that it shuts him down. Yeah, he does. It is two versus two, both Pasha and Bayali with only pistols. Bondic is going to come round the back, do Pasha from behind. And now Bayali stuck between a rock and a hard place, needs to try and defuse this bomb. And with only a P250, he's not going to be able to do it. And my question to the people in the chat right now, do, do you think Overpass is a CT-sided map, or do you think Overpass is a T-sided map? 
That's I, a question for I mean, game. again, I'm new to this game, and this is a new map, and we've not really seen this too much before. But initially, just from looking at kind of like the map structure, I would at first say that it could be a CT map, basically favoured off how close those bomb sites are. And if you know you stack your team around there and get some good you know support on either bomb site, you're going to be able to rotate relatively quickly, you would think. But then again. On the other hand, it just looks like it's a complete maze, and it looks like there are so many different routes around the map that, um, therefore, you know, it could be easy for the T's to sneak around the place and get into some tricky positions. So I I'm not sure at the minute. I need to make my mind up uh, in some time over this map. Yeah, a lot of close quarters like here where Flamey is going to drop Bayali, unlike Bayali to go down so early in the round for the poles and. Well, are we going to see the Russians get their fourth round on the board? Like many, I have skins on Virtus Pro, and I too was surprised when I saw that the map was going to be overpassed, but hey, whatever floats Virtus Pro's boat, I guess. They've been boot camping for the past few weeks. They've obviously been practicing this map. They seem to feel confident on it. But only time will tell as to whether they can convert that confidence into, uh, into a win so far in the group stages. A versus three situation as it stands here. Pasha and Bayali, the only two casualties in round number six. Flame and Bondic need to be careful though. 22 HP and 10 HP. Them. Well, then it is going to go down. Flame, you've picked up a kill onto Snacks. So that's going to lead things into a 4 on 2 situation. But look at this. Neo with a lovely spot. Unfortunately, he's only going to be able to pick up one. And now he's the last one left alive as Taz is going to get dropped. The bomb will go down here. And unless Neo can do something pretty spectacular, it's going to be 4 2. And that's confirmation of that. That's picking up four rounds on the trot here. And they just keep getting that bomb down, which means that they're just, uh, you know, they're bringing that economy up more and more so. And we're actually seeing World Edit again with that AWP. We'll see what work he can do with it. But this is going to be another tricky situation for Verdus Pro in terms of money. Ash are going to see if he can do anything with the SSG. It's going to be a difficult one. We've got a couple of grenades in Bialy and Snacks. But not really much too exciting here. So you would expect here that DAP could take their fifth round in a row. Yeah, you were talking about the money. Bondic had over $11,000. So I think it's safe to say that DAT won't be finding themselves on an eco anytime soon. But Snacks has gone unnoticed. Blade is going to slowly approach him. It's AK versus CZ. The uh, CZ wins. But Flamey will get a return frag alongside Bondic before Bayali leveled things up at 3-on-3. Three three. So it's still, a, again, we're in the same scenario where it seems that both teams, despite one of them being on the eco, seem to have an equal um, share of the number of players. But I would expect from this point on, Chewie, for Dat to put their foot down and, and win this round. They do have the AK-47s, and even though there are a lot of close quarters from what we've seen so far in this map, I think the terrorists will be looking to use their knowledge of this map to their advantage and uh, take their weapons, take those AKs where they feel they can be most effective. Indeed, and Nia's going to spot that player, though, but not quick enough. Ubik's going to stop him in his tracks. Ali's going to go down as well, and it's all left up to the man with the SSG in hand, which will be Pasha. Three versus one situation for him. He's all left on his own, and the bomb's going to get planted again any second here by World Edit. And, you know, everybody's wondering, overpass? How did we get overpass? What happened? Well, um, you know, the teams obviously know what they're strongest on. And it's a real kind of toss-up, so to speak, in these early stages here. Because basically, I'm sure you've had it all explained to you before, but we might as well explain it again here just uh, before this round ends here. Um, the way that the veto system works in the group stages is that there's seven maps in the map pool in total. Um, of course, this new map here, Overpass coming in, Cobblestone coming in, Cash coming in, and Train going out. Um, and then what happens from there is that each team gets two vetoes, so that's obviously four overall, leaving three maps left. And the way that it goes from there is that it is completely random which two teams, uh, well, which uh, map these two teams are going to face up on. So that's obviously how it's happened. So Cobblestone, uh, sorry, Overpass and two other maps were left standing after the vetoes. And it ended up on this one. It'll be interesting to see what both teams think of that initially. By the looks of things, that are happy with the choice of map. And uh, we'll see if they can capitalize off that. Five uh, rounds in a row for them. There we go. So Virtus Pro finally bought up. Neo is going to be the author. 
Normally we see Pasha playing with the AWP. And wow, Bayali with two already. And is that the kick up the backside that Virtus Pro need to get themselves back in this game? Pasha is bleeding internally, finding himself on only one point of health. He's on the phone to a medic. And by the looks of things, I think one bombsite is on top of the uh, of the other Chewy. I can't quite tell based on what we've seen so far. Uh, I think I'm, I'm I'm definitely sure they're on different levels. Yeah. Uh, but I, I'm not quite sure uh, if they're right on top of each other again. We do apologize, guys. I know we're supposed to be professional casters <laughs> who know everything about Counter Strike and never get a word wrong. But uh, we're we're having fun. You know, it was. I, I had an interesting time once where I casted Season and I'd never even heard of the map before. It was Virtus Pro versus Titan. I had like seven thousand people in the chat. And uh, I'd never even heard of the map before, so that was definitely an interesting one. That was a couple of months ago. But back on board with this game, it's all going to be left up to World Edit. Bayali finishes him down, and finally, after that team took five on the trot, Virtus Pro eventually able to put a stop to it. Neo and Taz the only casualties there for the side from Poland. So 5-3 is your score here. Still no indications in these early stages about who's going to run away with this game. It definitely could go either way here. Um, but yeah, I'm interested to see who takes this one, especially obviously with this map choice. By the way, I just want to apologise. Obviously, I understand a lot of people saying we should have researched this map beforehand, but we were never actually contacted by ESL until two days ago. Um, but we, we we had no idea that we'd be uh, helping out with ESL one on this first day, which sort of explains uh, our, our our lack of. Uh, research into overpass <laughs> yeah and just on another note i just saw somebody else say in the chat that you won't get drops here because this isn't the official esl no, twitch we do, have drops, uh, we do have drops here guys um we have been contacted by uh, esl just in the last few days as we said as one of the community streams they've got a load of community streams in different languages to help you all and we are one of those so you can get drops here confirmation of that before anybody says anything else you can get drops but on another note the more you type um uh, exclamation point drop the less chance you have probably of getting any because uh, it doesn't do anything whatsoever so enough of that back on board with the game it's back and forth in it's actually led to a three versus three situation as things stand the bomb looks like it's stacked up in mid at the second well then it misses his shot and he's going to get punished for it as Pasha shuts him down Pasha's going to get his second there so that's flamey down and he's also found out where the bomb's going to be so you beat one versus three situation for this man he's going to get spotted Neo shuts him down with the AWP only 5-4 still in favour of Dat. Yeah, and Dat, they, they, they might force the buy here. Blade isn't looking too healthy financially, probably down to the fact that he's only managed two kills so far this game. But hey, Counter-Strike is a team game. Ubeek, I'm not sure. Right, someone's dropped. Okay, so Ubeek is going to go with the Galil. And someone else managed to drop an AK-47 for Blade. So that makes sense. So that they are going to sort of force the buy. And uh, here we go. Blade is going to make his way towards the A-bomb site. I don't know about you, Chewie, but can you hear radio sounds? We don't normally hear hear, hear the in-game radio sounds. Yeah, no, I can. I've been hearing it all the time. It's, 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 it's putting it's, me off. Yeah, it's very slightly uh, distracting. I'm not quite sure what's it's going on strange. there. strange. I think we'll have to speak to the guys in Cologne. But it is going to be flamey to drop the man with the biceps in Pasha and he might get a second, no he's not, Snack shuts him down and he gets that kill and says right I'm out of here, I'm gonna fall back and regroup with the rest of my teammates and by the looks of things they're all gonna regroup and uh, make their way towards long, towards a B bomb site. Well I'll have to see what's gonna happen because that bomb's still all the way back really towards T spawn kind of area and there's only 46 seconds left on the clock so the T's need to do something and they need to do something now. Snacks in a lovely position there actually pushed up relatively aggressively he's gonna take down Bondic so let's see if this is gonna push the T's and spur them on to try and get a return frag and push their way onto a bomb site. Looks so as well then it gets one. Neo responds though so all battle going down and Neo winning that one. The bomb is gonna get planted though though so that's great for the economy of that. Is it gonna be enough though? I am he comes in, shots going down rage, headshot onto Blade, Ubeek being the last person alive in a one versus three, he's got one with the Galil, is he going to be able to get the last two? But Ali's got to be careful, he's on four HP, it won't matter though, Snacks shuts him down, Bomb will be defused, and Kainite on overpass here heading into round number 11, we're all even 5-5. Five, five. Yeah, 5-5, five, five. and again, we were asking as to whether it was a CT-sided map or a terrorist-sided map, to be fully honest, 
from what we've seen so far, it seems somewhat relatively 50-50. And I think because it's such a new map and not a lot of teams have really looked into the maps too much, I think we're at a point where anything could genuinely happen, depending on the team, depending on how aggressive their approach is, depending on their opponents and how their opponents try to counter the approach mm. a certain team um, tries to tries to tries to use. And these radio commands are really doing my head in. Yeah, sort I'm, of I'm, remind I'm, me of G3, where all, all I could hear was a production team talking <laughs> non-stop in my ears. Um, well, uh, yeah. Uh, it's it's kind of like back on the old CS where it was just fire in the hole every two seconds, pretty much that you, that you could hear in all of the. Yeah, but you understood what was being said when they said fire in the hole. This is just random mumbling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It's just kind of like this weird American guy in the background just talking <laughs> every now and again. But here we go. Round number eleven. It is. Flamey and World Edit getting knocked down at 51 HP and 44 HP respectively. Bash is going to find one though. Great shots down range. He's knocked down a 5 HP, but he takes down two players to start things off. Two headshots with the M4 for Pasha. Now he's going to get finished off by Blade eventually. But still, a 2 for 1 trade there. Virtus Pro are going to be happy with that. I'm not sure if Blade actually spotted that player there or whether it was just X-Ray Mode picking him up through a wall. I couldn't quite I see the angle there. The yeah, I, I had a feeling, sir. So. It was just a bit of an awkward angle, maybe, uh, for him. So, four versus three situation as it stands. And it looks like the bomb could potentially be making its way over towards A if they make their way around this left-hand side of the map. Neo finishes off you beat though, and it's a four on five situation. And another thing to take into account here, Kyna, is you know, we've talked about how new the map is and how these teams haven't really played on it before too much. They've had a bit of time, I'm sure, to practice it, but I'm not quite sure how much time. And on that note, how much time have these two teams played each other on this map? That's going to be the interesting factor. Well, I think the answer to that is they've never played each other on this map. Uh, I'd be really surprised if they have done. Like I said, I know that Virtus Pro, after G3, they went into G3 on the back of their holiday or vacation, as they like to call it in the American terms. Um, and they still managed to win that event, even though everyone else there was rusty. And I know that uh, Virtus Pro have been. These these radio commands are really doing my head in. Deploying flashbang. I don't care if there's someone deploying a flashbang. Chewy, I'm gonna. Uh, uh, hop on Skype and have a word with the guys in Cologne, and uh, you can cover the game for a few seconds. That's fine, not a problem whatsoever. So, here we go. So, the cars coming in from Chewy, and it's going to be an eco coming in here from the T's, and they're going to be happy. No, they're not, because the bomb wasn't planted. They were so close to getting that down. And Bondic has picked up an M4 in hand, but still. If they'd have got that bomb piled down on the eco, they would have been happy. That would have really boosted their economy. And they did get a couple of frags onto Taz and Snacks in the end. So that would have been an optimal situation for them there. But it didn't work. 7-5 is going to be your score now for Virtus Pro in the lead. Heading into round number 13. We've only got a couple of rounds left here in the first half. And it's still relatively equal. It could go either way at this point. Which is exactly what we want to see. So... That on the T side here, they have been able to get some weapons in hand now of worth after echoing the last round. Of course, it would have been even better for them if they had got that bomb down, as we previously mentioned. Well, did it with that orb. He's really been too explosive with it so far. He is 11 and 8. Um, but, you know, we know what he can do with that orb, but he's not really just uh, gone absolutely crazy with the thing yet. See what he can do over time. Five versus five situation here though in round number 13. Taz peeks away at the last second, but he's going to pick up that kill. Looking back just at the right second as Ubik is the first casualty. In comes the incendiary grenade. And Blade gets one. But does get t t uh, sorry uh, taken down by Taz. That's Taz's second of the round. And it's already a one versus four situation here for Flamey. He's got that AK-47. He's got a wealth of grenades. It's not going to work though. Taz with the triple. Only one casualty in Neo. An 8-5 is going to be your score on Virtus Pro. At the first two rounds in the game, then they let things slip a bit, and they lost five on the trot. And now since then, they've taken six, and this has really been a back and forward game. It's not been one of those games where it's just one round in favour of one team, then the next round in favour of the other. It's it seems to be you know one of those maps where if you get that ball rolling, the momentum running, you can take a couple of rounds on the trot, and then as soon as that momentum stops, it switches in favour of the other team. That's you know basically what we've been seeing so far, anyway.
Right, I've Random spoken uh, ah, with uh, some people at the event. I'm currently awaiting a, a reply. If anyone in the chat, if we can take sub mode off, and anyone in the chat can tell us the command required to get rid of the radio commands, we would be very, very, very grateful because someone has turned it on by default. But anyways, it's going to be World Edit who's all eyes down this pipe. I think he uh, saw a glimpse of Taz. And Taz definitely knows they're there. Someone said that the train doesn't scare Taz. It most certainly doesn't, but he definitely put him off. And it's going to be Dat who are going to get the first two kills of this round. Oh, indeed, you beacon well dead at left on 17 HP and 28 HP respectively though here. And this is good here for Dak. If they can take this round, of course they're only two rounds behind heading into the last round and it could be very, very equal indeed. Either. Still not over yet here for Virtus Pro. They can still hold this and I believe the bomb has been planted. So now the pressure is on the team from Poland. Take out World Edit though. It's a two on four, sorry, a two on three situation. Pasha's left on four HP. He's going to be the last one left alive. Chewy, SV underscore ignore radio one. Oh wait, no, that didn't even work. Oh my god. Probably somebody trolling you. We'll work it out in half time. It's all good. I'm not, I'm really not too worried about it in a second. You can, I, I've just turned my in game volume basically completely right off so I can only hear you. I understand you can't do that for the stream, so that's fine. But, uh, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm good to go. It's all good. I'm not too worried about it. But, kind of, it's the last round of the first half, my friend. 8 6 is your score in favour of the team from Poland and, of course, the defending champions of ESL 1. And I think this could be, again, you know, a relatively important round here, although it could still swing in either favour. If Virtus Pro finish this 9-6, then I think that they can capitalise off that when they head over to the T side. But if that team make it 8-7, then it really still could go either way. It doesn't look like it's going to be 8-7, though, as Ubique and World Edit are the last two left alive here. So Virtus Pro will go in to the second half with a commanding three-round lead. All right, so nine six. I've pretty much tried every single command people have uh, have put in chat, and we, I, we apologize, guys. But it's just as hard to listen to for you guys as it is for us to it's try and. Just and it, it is funny. very off -putting. It's, people it's don't one realize. of those games. It, we, we were going to have something like this go on. It's just, yeah, I, I knew something was going to happen at some point. But still, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you're enjoying it. We know it's a little bit uh, random with us, really not knowing a great deal about the uh, the map. But uh, we know a great deal about Virtus Pro, kind of. So let's just talk about them quickly uh, as the teams switch for half time. And I'm pretty sure I know who the answer is going to be here for you. But if you had to choose one standout player for Virtus Pro, who would it be? Well, based on what we've seen so far, it has to be Stax and Bialy. I think uh, Pasha has failed to fail to show us what what we're normally used to seeing from him. Maybe because it's, it's been Neo who's been the main orper, and Pasha is, of course. Uh, pri pri uh, primarily an orb player. Um, Snacks and Bialy, the thing about this map from what we've seen so far, there's those tight corners where you can hold an angle and for example just flash off the wall and peek out and take your opponents by storm. And Most of the time when you manage to do that you actually end up facing two or three of your opponents. And Snacks and Bialy, the two main riflers in the Virtus Pro side playing with those silenced M4s. Uh, there's, there's been moments where they've managed to get two kills in literally a matter of seconds and I think that the, their dominance in those situations has really been the turning po point for Virtus Pro based on what we've seen so far because there was something like, I think it was 5-2 down at one point. So to bring it back 9-6, mm. doesn't look too bad and considering Virtus Pro have been practicing this map, and let's be honest, um, we'd like to, to, to think that all the teams who have come into this tournament have practiced both Overpass and Cobble um, will have some uh, terrorist-sided tactics under their belt. Oh yeah, I definitely think they will do. And, and again, I think that Virtus Pro can capitalize off this, considering the fact that they had such a good run there on that first half. Yeah, they lost five rounds in a row, but then they came back and won, I think it was six or seven, um, which was you know great play from them, showing what, what they, they have put into the CT side here on this map. And if they can take this pistol round here, it's going to be even better for them. So here we go, and just actually a little side note, in both of the games going on here at the second the ESL1 Cologne, both of them are on the new maps in play. Cobblestone is actually being played between Fnatic and I by Power. So, certainly interesting overall, but this is what we like. We love it when things are changed up. But, Kainite, take it away. 16th round into the second pistol round of the game. Here we go. So, the Katowice champion.
champions want to get their 10th round on the board and it's going to be a pistol round assuming they can do it. Neo is going to go all in towards the say bonsai. Blade is quick on the rotation and that's a great rotation from him. Little does he know he's only meters away from the incoming Vertus Pro players. But his flashes have forced them to fall back and I think we're going to see, see a much slower approach from Vertus Pro now Chewy. Maybe so, the flashes are still going down, but the CT's holding strong. In comes the push, and it's about to all go crazy any second. Pasha gets the first kill of the second half. Well dead it responds. Bailey with another. Pasha with his second. And once this guy starts getting the kills, you almost can't stop him. Let's see if he can pick up the triple. Yes, he does. And that's all going to leave things in the hands of Flamey. Pasha, is he going to get the four man? Yes, he does. 4K for Pasha to start things off here for Virtus Pro on the second half. He's left on one single point of health. But wow, great stuff with the 5-7 coming in from that man. The biceps are with him today. Yeah, just to clarify, ignore rad has not worked. Any SV commands, SV stands for server, so the guys in Cologne are responsible for that. If we type that in console, it's not going to make a difference. And as far as TV, TV relay radio is concerned, I set that to zero, and unfortunately to no avail. So we are stuck with the radio commands. But here we go. Bayali with the uh, Gilil. We've got Snacks who's interestingly, uh, interestingly opted to go for the shotgun. Of course, if he manages to get a kill or two with it, it'll give him a heck of a load of cash to work with. And The, the reason why he's probably bought that Chewie is because he wants to get an AWP in the hands of Pasha or maybe Neo um, as fast as possible. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Of course, Neo, one of those players also who can pick up an AWP. I do believe uh, that was a gun really of his strong choice back when he used to play in 1.6, if I'm not mistaken there. So Neo can definitely put in a good shift with the big green gun, just like we know Pasha can do as well. But Neo's actually going to get knocked down to 2 HP. Taz does help him out though, and Bondic is going to go down. So it's still a 5 on 4 situation here, but Neo has to really be careful with what he's got. And it looks like that's a great decision. They're going to switch things up. So Snacks has been given the Galil. Neo's been given the shotgun, and it's a 5 on 3 situation here. Blade's going to get knocked down to 60 HP. Pasha is going to get the headshot into UB. Pasha's going to pick up the second. 11 6 it is. The bomb should get planted to just help their money as well. Yes, it will do. And Verdus Pro starting potentially to run away with this one. Yep. And that team, of course, because they are on the more expensive CT side, they are going to be forced into yet another eco. But. We saw earlier on with Team Wolf how good those CZ75s are when utilized correctly. And you never know, Chewie, we might see the Russians uh, do something similar against their Polish comrades here. But do indeed, you can never quite count any team out in CS, and that's what we've learned about it. You know, I just love it. That's the reason why I moved over to it and started to cast this game, just because of how things can just switch any second. Here we go, and having a look at that, they look like they're playing things relatively aggressively here, and that's what I love to see on these eco rounds. You know, you've got to take the fight to the team who are on the anti eco, you really do, and Taz is actually going to get taken down first here to start things off. Pasha responds with a revenge kill onto World Edit, so it's a 4 on 4 as things stand. They weren't able to pick up any rifles, and in comes Snacks, he's going to get two <laughs> with, the, uh, yeah, with the Nova, and uh, that's a great start. Sorry, with the sawn off, I'm uh, mixing things up, I'm having a nightmare. I think this entire game has been a nightmare, Chewy. But don't worry, we're it's still fine. here. We're still enjoying ourselves. <laughs> Snacks has gone in three, and Bayali will nail Flamey in the head for the last one. And Virtus Pro, they have exactly double the amount of rounds their opponents have, which goes to emphasise how much more ground that have to cover to redeem themselves based on what we've seen so far. And, well, look at this. Snacks has only gone and bought an auto sniper. Make of that what you will. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what work he can do with that. But more interestingly, so maybe for some people's opinion, is that that have got a double orb set up here. So you beak and world edit going for those orbs, and let's see where they're going to go with it. So uh, one player actually sticking on the A bomb side with that, and I believe world edit is just looking over towards uh, that long section there uh, where the teams can push in towards the A bomb site. So into round number 19, we are. Virtus Pro only four rounds away from being able to take this game and you know with the scoreline that we're seeing so far Kai and I with all the games that we've watched and that have happened so far in the group stages there's not really been any dramatically close games um, I, I mean obviously we've got Fnatic and I by power going on at the same time here which could potentially be relatively close but Virtus Pro on the, you know on the verge of running away with this one here and they've already got two frags to start things off in this first uh, in this 19th round sorry yeah, but you can never rule that out. They do have a positional advantage being counter-terrorists, and 
they are only a man down, as we've seen time after time again in Counter-Strike. Being a man down doesn't mean much, especially if Flamey can get a second kill. Blade is hiding. He's in a perfect position here. He's spraying. He will get two. And he will drop snacks as well. And Chewy, exactly what I was talking about just happened. Even though they were a man down, you can never rule it out in Counter-Strike. And that, the fight back begins for them. And that's what I'm loving about overpasses, those kind of positions there. I mean, those pros just didn't quite check their corners, and there's all these little tiny spots where yeah, not people being like with Blade can just, yeah, can just pick up those kind of crazy three-man sprays in that fashion and just shut down a team despite having the man disadvantage at the start of that whole altercation there. So that's still not out of this game yet. We can't count them out whatsoever here. 12-7 is your score. And number 20 we go. Of course, Virtus Pro, because they've been doing so great here in this second half so far, apart from losing that last round, they have still got money in the bank. So Pasha has got that AWP. We'll see where they're going to head with a bomb. Initially, by the looks of things, it looks like it could be making its way over towards A. And having a look at the CT setup, you've got two relatively close to that A bomb site, and two right on top of B as well. And by the looks of things, they're just happy to sit back and not take anything too dangerously here. Yeah, we've seen a few smokes go out towards the B-bomb side, but I do believe they are defensive smokes more than anything. Obviously, when you stick a smoke down as a counter-terrorist, you pretty much force the terrorist to have to run through it. And uh, assuming you've got the positional advantage as a counter-terrorist, you should always be able to see the terrorists running through a smoke before they see you. But, uh, yeah, slow and steady wins the race, apparently, according to uh, Pasha and co. They were really nice people, by the way. Met them at G3. Awesome, awesome people, particularly Pasha. But anyways, let's stop fanboying Virtus Pro and focus <laughs> more on the game. World Edit has that AWP, and Taz, as a matter of fact, is only inches away from him. World Edit pulled the trigger, but it was a good leap from Taz in the end. But Blade, I think, knows exactly where the terrorists are hiding. Snacks is going to come through short. He's looking left. He's going to look right. Snacks. Oh, he got one. Snacks with the double as well. Leaving Ubik with it all to do. And he could only manage one kill in the end. And now, Chewie, Bondic is one versus four. One versus four. And I have a feeling uh, if it's going to be sensible, he won't go for it. And your phone starts ringing. Brilliant. <laughs> so 12 good, it's all good. I do apologise about that. I literally thought <laughs> that's the first. The that's the first. I don't think I've ever ha had I that literally, happen. That was the, the quickest mute I've ever done in my entire life. <laughs> I'm gonna kill my parents because they said that they'd taken it off the hook. But there we go. GG's. Hashtag blame Chewy. I think this is the further overpass, uh, competitive overpass game. In the history of CS:GO, like uh, that's you know been an, an official tournament, and I'm I'm proud to say that your phone rung in the first ever overpass. Uh, what an achievement! An exactly. Typical. I knew that was going to happen at some point today as well. It never happens whenever I cast, and then as soon as I'm doing something huge like this, it does. But it's one of those things. Other people live in the house. Anyway, let's get on with the game and <laughs> carry on <laughs> with what's going on here. Neo looking strong there, taking out Blade. It's all going to be left up to Ubik. It was an eco coming in for that team, and it's just going to move Virtus Pro even closer into it. And why is a mod? Uh, actually, no, I think it's uh, oh, it's Nightbot who's banning one of our subs for spamming something or something. I was like, what? What's going on there in the chat? But it's all good. So 14-7 is the score. That relatively forcing up here. Look at their economy, Karnak. Right? They've really not got much whatsoever, and they know how close Virtus Pro are to taking this game. So they've got to do something, and they've got to do something now. Well, it's quite simple, really. They don't want to force themselves to play for the draw. So we're seeing Blade sort of doing what we saw Snacks and Bayali trying to do to uh, their opponents. It's going to be Neo to get two. Snacks is going to take out the trash by dropping Blade. And at four versus two. I'm not sure if I can see a way back into this for that. But, like we said earlier on, it's Counter Strike. Anything's possible. Bondic has managed to nail Neo in the head as Snacks slowly creeps towards Bondic. Snacks drops one and knows exactly where World Edit is. I'm sure his teammate will have called it. I think he may have heard him drop down and it's Snacks versus World Edit. And well, I would have put money on Snacks winning that battle. 15 7 is the score at the moment. And even though Virtus Pro sort of gave us a scare at the start, they've somewhat redeemed themselves and. Maybe, just maybe that need to take a long, hard look at their CT side of overpass for the future. Yeah. And I think from what we're initially gaining here about this map is that 
it is that momentum thing, you know. I, I, I don't know, and I re I'm, I know I'm going to sound like a noob with this, but it was what I was talking about earlier on with the fact that Dak took five uh, in a row, and one of those, of course, to start it off was an eco, and then Virtus Pro came back and took six or seven in a row, and then here they've only, you know, in the whole of the uh, second half, they've only let one round go. It is all about momentum here, it seems, on overpass to start things <laughs> off. Oh, wow, look at this. This is just crazy. Snacks finishing off a hell of a lot of players there. Well, then, it's going to be the last alive. He's down to 17 HP, and I have a feeling it's going to be game, set, and match for Virtus Pro. Yes, it is. 16-7 is your score. In come the GGs, and look at that performance by Snacks. 29-2 and 12. Top performance from him. Top performance from Virtus Pro, and they are going to advance themselves into the winners' match, and they will face up against I by Power or Fnatic. And having a look at the score here, I by Power up five two on Cobblestone. Interesting on Cobblestone. Fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, you see, the thing about these new maps is it sometimes might actually come down to whoever's practiced them more. Like at G3, I spoke to Chris J, and obviously Mouse Sports aren't in Cologne at the moment. And he was telling me that they practiced the new map so much that they felt the stand their 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 performance on the standard maps that they needed to qualify in the first place ended up lacking as a result of them putting so many hours into the new maps. So that's something we've got to we've got to bear in mind as well um, that other teams will have taken into account. They won't have put all their hours into practicing these new maps and trying to get their uh, heads around them. But anyways, take, let's take another look at the groups. We've got, we are in groups here at the moment, of course. We've got Virtus Pro, Fnatic, I by Power, and Dat. And I asked you this twice already for the previous groups, Chewy, and I'm going to ask you again. Group C, first, second, third, and fourth. What do you um, think? I don't know. It's going to be a difficult one because, again, this Fnatic, I by Power game is could be going either way. And... and, and... I don't know, especially on a map like Cobblestone, these two teams probably wouldn't have faced each other on here before. So again, that could really um, go either way here. But um, I have a feeling that Virtus Pro are going to take it either way. I think they're going to come first, most definitely. I buy power. I think one of the things that was stopping them is just what they've recently kind of been like in, in Europe. They've had some great performances in America, of course, with ESEA Land 16 not too far behind us. But G3, they didn't do quite as much as they would have hoped to do. Um, and, you know, Kalavitsi, they didn't have the best performance ever as well. But with that fact, they have been boot camping here in London, well, in London, actually, at the Gfinity Studios. So, um, you know, they have been putting some good work here in Europe. Um, but to cut, you know, a long story short, I think Virtus Pro are going to take it either way. I think they're going to come first. Um, and I'm just going to say, just because I'm European and I'm having a good guess, that it's again going to lay out like it does um, on, on the graphic there. So Virtus Pro first, Fnatic second, I by Power third, and Dat four. Yeah, I agree completely. But again, it, it does come down a lot to the f current Fnatic I by Power game on Cobblestone. But anyways, guys, that's going to be it from us. We'll, uh, we'll show ourselves again in another hour or so. Any subscriptions, any followers will be more than appreciated. But of course, if you don't fancy it, you don't have to. But my name has been Kyanite. You can follow me on Twitter. It's at Kyanite with a 1 instead of an I. So at K-Y-A-N-1-T-E. And you can follow Chewy on Twitter. Yep, and my Twitter is at It's Chewy. So that's I-T-S. C H E W W Y. So come and say hello to us. Me and Kaina are always checking our Twitter, so you're more than welcome to uh, ha have a good chat with us and come and say hello. Thank you to all of you who are following and, and saying hello and subscribing. We do appreciate it, of course. And we are at the second, uh, just under 13,500 followers, which is at absolutely crazy so thank you to you all shout out to everybody watching in the chat uh fanatic and i by power are still playing that's only in round number 10 i believe so make sure to go and watch that match and enjoy the action there from group c and we'll see you again with the last game of the day for us in just over an hour or so yeah which will be dignitas versus box yeah